back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be playing The Beginner's Guide. Now, this game is supposedly a very, very long game. And I bought it because I've seen a lot of other YouTubers play it. And I thought that it would be such a very cool concept of a game. So basically, this, like I said, this game is going to take quite a long time. So I'm going to try to add everything in there. Um, and I think I said this already, but it's going to take an hour. So we may have to split this up into a two-part series of this game. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. And be but listen, before we jump straight into it, I do guys just gotta say, I'm very sorry that I did not upload on Sunday. And the only reason why I didn't upload on Sunday is because, well, I had a very, very bad day, especially with my Steam gift card. But yeah, it's, it's it got pretty freaking damaged, so... We're just gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to do that. But, it all, I got all sorted out with Steam and stuff, so, very, very happy days, happy days. And also, we gotta say hi to Mochi as well. Um, I may have to put Mochi somewhere else, but for now, we'll put him behind the camera. Alright, so without further ado, let's just begin the game. Alright, here we go. Sorry if this is way too bright, but, please make sure audio is on. Alright, it's all the way up, so this better be good. My right, controls. Okay, good. Okay. Hi there. Hello. Thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide. Got you, bro. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote the Stanley Parable. Uh -huh. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Okay, three years. We're going to look at the yeah. games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. Oh, and nice. his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. What's I found that? it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. Okay. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first the game heck? he ever made. What it's a level this? for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. Right, and uh, mostly it's just... Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. What the heck? But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, yeah. he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. Yeah. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. Okay. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. Yeah. And it kind of makes you wonder. What was going through his head as he was building this? Yeah, this is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Oh, yay. So, it's 2008. Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. I would do that until too. suddenly one day, he just stopped. What? In 2011, that was it. Bro, he made his last game and then he game. hasn't made another one since. Bro, come on. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, yeah, like, and I'd like this collection on? to reach him, to maybe that? encourage him to start creating again. Yeah. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then yeah. I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. Oh, yeah. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at okay. D-A-V-E-Y-W-R-E-D-E-N at gmail.com. Okay. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Okay. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. All right, so As each game is loading, is. I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. 2008? That was one year after I was born. Okay. So, I feel very, like, grasped into the story of this already because I was watching a video of this Guava Juice. Pretty good channel. 
um, just wanted to like make it clear so I know some of it but not all of it so yeah so let's just hop straight into it all right. Oh my. oh my god! Oh my god! This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Yeah, bro. Alright, let's go. Okay, go, 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 go. Okay, what is it? Oh my god, it's on fire! Oh my goodness. Alright, run, 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 run. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, yeah. but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. Yeah. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Okay. So what they are, not what they're not. Okay. What's going on over here? So it's just warning, whisper machine active. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Well, look at that, it's a great block. Okay. Yo, guys, the universe is a block. I never knew that before. That's so cool. Alright, now what? Oh, no, it's a maze. Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. No, I wanna do it! No, no. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. Okay. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay, but... Alright. Hey! You there! In yeah! the engine room! You could save us all! Uh-huh. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. What about yours? It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Nah, bro. I'm gonna give that to my mom. Alright, here we go. Woo! Let well, me pause here for a second. Okay. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. Yeah. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Okay. So that, so basically what you just saw is what was supposed to happen, but what actually happened was this. Like, get to the door, woo! Uh, see ya. Okay, um. The beam causes you to start floating. What the heck? And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Oh, or this floating could be the afterlife, okay. a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. but. What's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Alright, oh, so first game after this glitched game. Okay. Okay. Um Outside yep. Him. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Oh, what? oh, okay. The past was behind her. Okay. This is freaking weird, brother. Alright, um... Let's keep going. This music. Oh, so it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment but combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Right, Code is trying to give it a unique oh. voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing okay, trope. Okay, uh, okay, we get it. Let me, okay. Why does the future keep changing? Is there somebody here? Um, let's go this way. 
Oh, it says, it becomes clear. Oh, shoot. And what else does it say? When she stops and looks, it becomes clear. Yo, I had to sneeze. <coughs> Woo! My bad. Sorry about that, guys. Alright, so let's keep going, it says. But if the future was always behind her, how will she find the strength to confront it? Woo! It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. And Which, to me, is out. why it works. Because yeah. it gets out quick. Okay, next one. I mean, as long as it doesn't cost money, I would buy Bro, I hate, I hate this kind of thing. Alright, what does it say now? You are now entering. I'll get that. Can we see anything? Nah, bro. That's so scary. Okay. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay, I got you, fam. Alright, so th this is now December. So now Oftentimes, Coda game. would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Okay, um... Yeah. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. Okay. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like... That was it. It was dead to him. All right, so and I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly, brother. Um, all right, so... Th oh, that wind! So loud, brother. All right, let's just go up uh, the staircase to heaven, I guess. All right, let's go. Come on! Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Coda's not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Yeah, well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Really? Right, so, enter. Okay. Go, 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 go. Don't slow down. Alright, let's go. Stand on an X staring at the bear for th three hours. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Life on a boat taking orders from the captain. The captain is always wrong. What does this mean? You must address a, a room a that's bigger. warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. A key in one game unlocks a door in a completely separate game. Oh my gosh! Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Joe, this is giving me, like, chills and stuff. A game is only motivation to close after playing. Cannot. This is cr Okay, now we're in January 2009. Ready, set, fish? Okay. Alright, well... What the heck, brother? Yo, I swear, if something jumps out of me, I'm gonna scream so loud. Okay, we got the door. Yo, Mario, brother? Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Okay. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Alright, so we do click that. That's so easy, brother. Get out. Oh, Don't forget that solution because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. All right, we're so gonna see it a lot. Okay, so guys, remember that puzzle. Okay, so we got three, three dots right there. Top, 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 top. All right, I'll stop talking. I'm sorry. It's just that I like to talk. All right, um, that's it. Okay. So that seems to be it, right? Yeah, it's pretty you walk cool. down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to modify the game again so okay. that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Oh my goodness, this music is so loud. I'm so sorry, guys. But, but... All right, so wait, what did you say? Oh! Wait, oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see if we can get this. How about that? That's there was more to it than we had any way of knowing. 
I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing, or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? I don't know, brother. You told me. Okay, January, she's up. We're back here again. We're slumming our world. Alright, uh, we're not exiting. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay, so what I think this is, is some sort of, like, a, a story telling, him, telling us about his life. Um, okay, um, the whitest place I've ever seen. Sorry. Alright, so we get a little down. This is actually really nice. Let's talk about video game development for a yeah. second. Mm -hmm. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which yeah. determines what the game can and cannot do. So, in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. That's a one toilet and a bathroom for all these stuff, for all that stuff. See if we can open those. Oh, there's a little door. Okay, so we're going to have to go Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yeah, me too. All right. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Wow. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Oh, this is so easy. Watch me get this first try. Oh, there's a 
there's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Kuda begins what using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Um, so, yes, there is a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there is an enormous person I spent hours in. Yes, there are these floating colored blocks. Ooh. I think two is the best one. Yes, there is an enormous person I spent in for hours in. That's the world above. You've been there. Now, this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? One. Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. Again. Perfect. Now, please tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I, I don't remember. I didn't solve it. Someone else at the end. Trust me. Don't want to go over there. How come we can't run? We just did it. I'm gonna do three because you do remember, but I'm sorry about the voice, that's terrible. Oh no, but I do, we do, we need to get out there. Do you understand? It's the most important thing in the world. You have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there was nothing I want more. What the heck is that? Okay, um... How did you get here? What was the puzzle that you had the pass for? Um... Yes, do you know how to solve it? Oh wait, oh shoot, that's the wrong one. I suggest you go to see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit back in the, in the black space in the middle. What happens if I solve it? Yeah. Not sure, but if I have any suspicion, what you find won't be worth what it takes to get there. You have another chance to solve it. Okay, um... There's a dark corridor, but... And so we make one last descent yeah. down to the final floor of the level. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Okay. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because yeah. now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. Okay. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Okay. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. Okay. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. That's it? All right. That's, that's, that's actually a pretty interesting one, because we're blacking out here. Alright. Loading. April 2009. The game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. Okay. All notes you see are left by other players. Ooh. Alright. Alright, guys. Let me just escape this. Let's, um. Oh, click to menu. Okay. Okay, so we're on chapter 8. That's perfect. It saves by itself. So, that's basically going to be the first part of the beginner's guide. I really hope that you have enjoyed um, this game so far, and I really hope that this is a good topic.
because if I get enough money, I could probably buy Amazing Fog, and that's going to be a huge series. But I really want to see this, because I haven't seen the entire aspect of the game yet, and I really would love to see this. So, I really appreciate you all watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace out. Oh, wait, 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 I almost forgot. I'm so stupid. Don't forget to like, subscribe. My Instagram's also going to pop up right here. And, you know, I just made a TikTok, and that should be right here. And finally, here we go. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.